ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு எட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ ஐ வில் ஷோ யூ ஹவு டு ஜென்ரேட் ஜேமீட்டர் ஹெச்டிஎம்எல் டேஷ்போர்ட் ரிப்போர்ட் யூசிங் போத் ஜியூஐ மோட் அண்ட் தி நான் ஜியூஐ மோட் ஸோ ஃபர்ஸ்ட் வில் சி ஹவு டு டூ இட் இன் தி ஜியூஐ மோட் அண்ட் தென் ஐ வில் டேக் யூ த்ரூ தி steps on how to do it through the non gui mode and before we move on to the video this is me was in shamugam i welcome you all to our little sly youtube channel please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you have subscribed it if you have not subscribed it and like share the video with your friends and if you have any queries or any uh, feedback please do comment in the comment section so now first let's see how to Uh, generate the jmeter html dashboard report using the non gui mode so here i have my http request under a thread group so first firstly we need to have a thread group under the thread group we need to add the sampler so here i have my setup everything is ready so in case if you do not have a http request please do add a http request and then add some other requests like whatever request you want you can add them in your jmeter or if you have your setup already just keep it the same way and apart from this the next part which you have to add is go to the thread group or go to your recording controller right click on it or you can even just go to your thread group add listener and select the simple data writer because this is very important for you to create because this is the file where we have or we are supposed to save our raw data or the test uh, the logs the test logs which we are going to use it for creating the j uh, the jmeter html dashboard so make sure you are adding the simple data writer and make sure you are disable your your view results because it's not any more required while you are running your load test using the gui mode and then moving on to the next part is before that let me click on browse and this is the folder which i'm using now so inside your bin i have a folder which is jmeter html dashboard and i'm selecting the results.csv so this is the file which i'm going to use to write the values write the jtl the java logs while i'm running my test and after this so i once you have added your simple data writer you are going to add your file to this location and then go to the tools click on generate html report and now here we have already seen we have got a file name just copy it paste it here or if you want you can just go to browse and choose the jmeter html dashboard select the file and you're done and then the user.properties file go to browse inside your bin you can find the user.properties file select it and then your output directory make sure you need to have a empty directory so for that i'm choosing my final results folder and there's nothing inside this file it's an empty folder and now i have got everything set up so the next part is we have to run the test so i'm starting the test now overwrite existing file overwrite existing file and if we see here uh the test is running so i have just cre- running i'm just running this test for like 60 seconds so that i can collect some amount of data otherwise there will be like very less number of data and we might not have any metrics to see in the dashboard in the uh, generated dashboard so it's always good um and another thing which i wanted to tell you why are we creating this report because we have the summary reports where we can get the average minimum maximum and if we go to the aggregate report we can collect the 90th percentile the 95th percentile even the 99th percentile so why do we really need to create a, a html report because when you are running a test as a performance tester or a performance engineer you will have an idea on what is happening in the application or in the tool but someone who is completely outside our scope or someone who is a stakeholder but who does not know what is happening with the tool or with the performance engineering he might need to understand how does it work or just by seeing the graphs or just by seeing the tables he will understand what is happening around the test and it's always useful for us to 
presented something in a better manner so that is the reason we have to sell we have to create this uh, dashboard the html dashboard okay so now let's so we have run the test now we have got the results let's go to the tools click on generate html report and we will paste the values again so the csv the location which i have selected already and then the user dot properties and then the output directory is inside the html dashboard the final result folder and i'm clicking on open now when i click generate report let's wait for a few seconds for the report to get generated and yes now we have got generating a report and the report has got created so let's now go back to the final results folder and here inside it you can see the index.html so this will take us to the so in fact most of the times uh, the team uh, or as part of your uh, report you might need your start time and end time so everything will be like displayed here in a better manner in a more presentable way and i would suggest you to create this dashboard and take the values from here and if you present it to your stakeholders it will be more pleasing for them and they can very well understand it because if you see here you have got response uh, times over time and you have got the percentile graphs here and uh, if you go to active threads over time you can see how much threads because since i'm just using only one thread it won't be much uh, of a, a good way but if you are running it a real actual user load test you might see this is showing wonders when you are running this test and when it comes to throughput you can see the throughput and you can actually select multiple graphs you can have select the hits per second the transactions per second graph and you have response times versus request so all these graphs will definitely create an impression on how you do your test because there is always a, a word which my mentor used to say when you visit a restaurant when we order for a dosa the server will take the request and he will create it in his kitchen we might not know what is actually happening there or how tidy the place is but when he present it to us he will present it in, a, it in a better manner so that we get an impression that it tastes well it has been prepared well so that is the reason i am telling you again and again make sure your report is eye catching but make sure they are having the valid results but again the point is we need to have a real results but it's always better to have it in a better manner so that if it is good you will be appreciated on even if it is bad you will be in a better position to explain it very well so that's the reason you will have to understand these part and you'll have to start creating it start working on it rather than just taking the results from your jmeter with the aggregate report or the summary report it's always better i would say it's always a good practice to take these values and run it so we have come to an end for this gui mode part and we can do the same thing using non gui mode so i will explain you here and before that let me empty this folder and uh, let me go to the command prompt here so we'll have to open the command prompt from the bin directory so i'm going directly to the bin directory and right click and click open in terminal so this will automatically uh, open the command prompt from the bin directory and i have already created the command here so let me explain it to you before i start running the command so here if you see i have got jmeter minus n minus t which is the test file and this is the test file which we have executed which is the demo dot jmx and uh, coming to the result file so when you are running it in the uh, non gui mode it's it's always best to choose the jtl mode which is, which is again a uh, java logs but it's always i would prefer you to choose the jtl mode because this is most time consuming and resource consuming as well and that's the reason i want you to choose this and uh, finally the dashboard results so this is like minus e space minus o and give it give the final result folder so if you remember we have got the final result folder under this location here there's nothing in this folder and make sure that it's, it's not it's empty and uh, 
I'm just giving this one under double quotes because there's a spaces between uh, the HTTP space cache space manager. So I'm giving a space because the same way I, I will actually tell you because if you are creating a folder name with spaces, just add a double quotes before and at the end. So that will give it as a single string. So now we are ready and let me run the script for you and this will actually start running. Okay, I think there is... It's not empty okay i think uh, we need to uh, make the file empty so let me go back to the file yeah and also you have to make sure that this file here should be empty so let me open the file and let me delete all the contents because this one i have used it for some verification let me go back here yep, and let's run the file again run the test again and this will do the same action what we did in GUI mode but in GUI mode if you see we have got some little more actions but in the non GUI mode it's very simple you have to just have your file the JMX file which you want to run which you have to use for your test and then your JTL file which has to be empty and then the final result folder which has to be empty because when you're running in GUI mode it has asked whether I should overwrite or whether I should append but in this uh, non G mode, it does not have an option to ask you or give any prompt that whether what should I do. So that's the reason uh, we have to give or we have to like make sure it's empty and it's clear so that uh, the chances of asking that questions is no more. And if there is something wrong, like we have faced already, so it will tell us like uh, there is an error in non GUI driver results and it will tell us that it's not empty, but still it's always good. It's always better to keep it empty so that we don't get this failure when we are running the test and uh, let's wait for a few more seconds to get this completed and then we will get the results in the same manner so yeah end of the test run let's go to the final results and yep we have got the same result same set of results yep. so i think uh, i would suggest you to use this and you will feel the difference in your team from the stakeholders like how well or how better this uh, results are looking and uh, with that I come to an end and I believe this video will be very useful to you so until I meet you in another interesting video it's bye bye for us and little slow